Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bell Cave. And welcome to the Bell Cave. I'm your host, Jordan Bell, and I hope you guys are having a great day. And let's get into the show, shall we? Before I get into my first guest, I want to talk about women in sports. Now, for the last couple of years, women have been dominating sports. Women have really taken over in a lot of aspects of sports. First, in just sports in general, let's look at collegiate basketball. You look at Kaitlin Clark of Iowa, three-point mastermind. I mean, knocking on every shot. Angel Reese of LSU, blocking every shot, getting every rebound, and walking around with straight confidence and swagger like nobody cared. And she just won her first national championship last year. Big props to her and the LSU girls. Then you look at the Olympic side. Since it's coming up in Paris, girls like Shakira Richardson, she's an Olympic star, fast as lightning, can take over on the track field, has a beautiful smile, and really, I mean, she's absolutely phenomenal when she steps on the track. On the track. Then you look at uh, who's transcended in gymnastics. Simone Biles and Gabby Douglas, two names that I know you've heard of, but have you really watched them? Have you really seen what they've done when they step on the gymna in the gymnastics floor? Phenomenal. Taking over the game and transcending the game to places it's never been. Then, let's look at sports media. For years, if you watch the NFL, you've seen Aaron Andrews and Carissa Thompson. They're going to give you the scoop before the game and tell you what the players have said to them and get the game really going. Then look at the NBA. Malika Andrews, the face of NBA Countdown. At times, the face of ESPN when Stephen A. Smith isn't on the air. She's really been able to elevate her game. She's even been able to cover the finals after Rachel Nicholson, who, when LeBron was going to the finals all those years, yeah, we heard Jeff Van Gundy, we heard Mark Jackson, we heard Mike Bren, but Rachel Nicholson was right in there with the, with the crew. Again, these women have been taking over sports and they're finally getting the spotlight they deserve. Shout out to the women who's doing their things. Keep going, keep grinding. And obviously, they're having fun. And you guys should enjoy the show. But that leads me to my guest today. My guest today will be Mahogany Jenkins. She's the Indiana track and field high jumper. We're gonna talk to her today and see how, what it's like being a D1 athlete at Indiana. And we're gonna talk to her about her women in sports and how that's changed her perspective. So without further ado, let's go talk to Mahogany. I'm here with uh, my family, my sister, my best friend, or my, my closest friend, Mahogany Jenkins. What's up? Talking to the mic. Oh, my bad. What's up? <laughs> so, uh, I'm here with Mahogany Jenkins. Uh, once again, welcome to the Bell Cave. Um, Mahogany, my first act, how are you doing today? I'm good. A little nervous, but I'm good. Don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. So obviously, um, you've had you went to Washington Hills. You uh, go to Indiana. Talk about the transition from high school athletics to now D one athletics. Um, I want to say I probably had an easier transition just because of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, the way that athletics was set up for us, we were able to train, of course, like with restrictions and everything like that. Yeah. But we were still able to do things, but there weren't as many uh, a lot of people opted out mm -hmm. so it I don't want to say it was easier but it still was like it wasn't as hard as it could have been you know uh, competition wise training wise uh, it's pretty difficult the, mm -hmm. uh, you have to get used to going from being an all-star to just being like not I don't want to say just another person but like you know like Everybody around you is amazing. I go from being uh, the man to a man. Yeah. Uh, so or in this case, the woman to being the, uh, a woman. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I had to get used to that, and that was kind of hard for the ego, you know, a little bit. Right. But after you get used to that, then it's pretty It's pretty good. I mean, obviously, I know from going from, um, you know, football from high school to college, I understand. So talk about uh, what is Indiana University like? Because, you know, we talk about culture big in sports. What does Indiana bring to culture and bring to uh, you as a person? That's actually kind of funny because that is the big thing this year. Uh, we had a our head coach retired, so we had a change in uh, coaching staff, and that's the big thing he's trying to bring uh, to Indiana and trying to take uh, input from the athletes and everybody on the team as to, like, what we want to see and what – do we think of when we think of Indiana track and field? So culture, we're trying to think of, uh, we're trying to be more of a family, more like with a set of separate event groups, you're trying to be one team that just happens to do different event groups. Um, 
So Indiana is trying to, we're trying to rebuild, rebuild right now and rebrand as one. So I feel like it's a work in progress right now for us. So I don't have a complete answer right now because we're still trying to build that, but that's where we're at right now. It's beautiful. Obviously, I'm repping the Indiana merch, as you can see. Uh, obviously, a big fan of Mahogany, um, big supporter. So, obviously, you have went from uh, – this. Is, you're going to your fourth year now uh, Indiana track, how time goes so quickly. Um, talk about uh, the Mahogany that came in freshman year to the Mahogany now, and what have you learned about – Not it, we talked program, we talked everything. What have you learned about yourself as a person and an athlete? Oh, that's a good question. Um, overall, I would say I learned to be patient uh, and that it, everything takes time, whether that's just me being as an athlete, as a person, uh, my performances, everything, like it takes time and I have to trust the process. Um, I feel like I get caught up a lot in what other people say, not as of uh, how they define me as a person, but just like my skill set and everything because like when I come home a lot of the times whenever like I meet up with different people everybody's calling me like the go or like just praising me glassing my head up and everything which is nice and cool but at the same time that pushes me to realize that like I have people that want to see me do great things Mm -hmm. and I feel like when in my younger (laughs) years I was always trying to like push myself to be great 24 seven rather than being okay with the process and being okay with like learning from my mistakes and everything like that. So I've definitely developed as a person that is okay with making mistakes and is okay with uh, not performing at the highest or not performing at a hundred percent, a hundred percent of the time. Uh, I just have to be okay with I don't want to say being wrong because that's that's not being wrong, but like be okay with just not being the goat mm-hmm. all the time, mm-hmm. which is definitely was a learning process for sure. Was it okay for you to fail at times to learn? Um, I had to be okay with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, freshman year, I had a good mentor who, who definitely told me straight up that you're gonna you're gonna do bad sometimes and it's okay. And I had a great supportive group that would tell me and would be there for me all the time and be there to tell me that like you're gonna be fine you're gonna do okay like you just have to go through this hard time you have to adjust you have to make the right corrections you just have to go through all this everybody's done this before and now it's just your time to do that so now i'm okay with making mistakes and failing but before it wasn't like that at all absolutely so obviously um you're uh, one of you're one of those special breeds that made it to D1 and can represent a community, a smaller community, uh, and you also represent multiple communities. One of them being a black a female athlete. So, talk to me. What is the impact you feel like you have on that? And talk to me about uh, female athletics and the impact you've seen it's had over the past couple of years. Um, I feel like we have a better representation now or I don't want to say that we've always had good representation but I feel like we're getting more attention Mm -hmm. and more light shine on uh, female athletics and I feel like that's the best part about it and being a part of that whether or not I'm specifically being have a light shine uh, shine on me yeah yeah, your word um, or not but I feel like we have a lot of people positively representing our uh, culture I feel like um with athletes like Caitlin Clark, Simone Biles, everybody like that, uh, Jasmine Moore doing great things. I feel like we're getting the right attention and the right amount of love that we should be, or no, we can be getting a lot more love, but I Absolutely. feel like it's in the right direction and you got to start somewhere, of course. Uh, me specifically with female athletes, I feel like we talk uh, we talk about this a lot with my uh, teammates, uh, things like body image issues and stuff like that, that we have, fought through in the past like everybody usually has their own story we always talk about it um i feel like that's getting more attention and the the right way to handle it is getting more attention as well um i feel like female athletes just go through a lot and i feel like we're we're in the right direction of where it's becoming a better culture and a better environment for us absolutely i mean i think female i think uh i'm huge performer of female athletes obviously supporting you support, uh, all of my friends uh, at Kane 
uh, across different campuses. And the field is growing, obviously. We've seen, I, I, we've seen a lot of women's basketball. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you're also a big basketball fan. You played basketball. Yeah. Like, so you've seen the growth in it. You've seen the growth not only in college basketball, but now it's getting WNBA. It's Las, the Las Vegas Aces, a team that's won in the past two seasons, yes. have one of the best coaches in basketball, not even just talking in women's basketball. So I get the huge improvement. Well, my the last two questions, and they're kind of different for me to ask. If life gave you lemons, how do you make lemonade? <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, you gonna repeat the question? <laughs> yeah, repeat the question. If life gave you lemons, and when life gives you lemons, how do you make lemonade? <laughs> Jordan, what? <laughs> um, I feel like you just give it all you have. You just give it all you have. That's the best I can answer. It's no, there is no wrong answer. It's, it's, I, you know, it's when life gives you lemons. How do you make lemonade? That, that's it. Yeah. Last question for me. Obviously, like you mentioned, everyone calls you the goat. Everyone calls you this and that. In your opinion, who's the goat in your life? Ooh. You can, there can be more than I'm one goat. Say, I don't have just one. Yeah, there can be more. I feel like. Okay, I have a really small circle, mm-hmm. and I feel like everybody involved in that circle is a go in some sort of way. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you and John, like, I've been lucky enough to be a part of your growth and your success, mm-hmm. and I'm happy and so proud of you guys. So you guys, go. Um, my five teammates, well, teammates, roommates, slash friends, like, they're all amazing. They're goats in their own way. Like, I can list off so many different reasons as to why but that will take forever. So I'll leave it as that. My mm-hmm. small friend group, small uh, circle, my best friend who plays at Monmouth, she's goat too. She's like, yeah. it's... It. That, was, that was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> shout out, Belmar. Shout out, shout out. But yeah, so I would say just, there's a few people, but those are the main people in my life. What's up? All right, thank you for your time out of your busy schedule. Uh if there's anything you want to say, the floor is yours. Oh, jeez. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, I'm, like I said before, I'm very proud of you. You're doing thank you. things. Thank you. I'm so happy to be a part of this journey for you, to see your growth and yeah. success. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Mahogany. Thank you, uh, Mr. Asante's in Greenbrook for the space. Uh, once again, shout out Indiana Track, Indiana Athletics. Uh, you can catch Mahogany uh, on the, on the. I don't know what I call. It. What do I? What do we call it? You catch her on the track. Well, well I guess you can. Because I'm a jumper, so it's like catch me on the runway. Catch you on the on runway. The apron. On the apron, catch her jumping over things, yeah. far and long and hard. Yeah. And watch her do her thing. Once again, congratulations on your success and your journey. Uh, And that's it for me. I'll see you guys next time. All right, that's going to do it for the show. I want to thank Mahogany for taking the time out of her busy schedule to come and talk to me. She was an excellent guest. I hope you guys enjoyed the interview. Shout out Professor K for really always having my back. I know he wanted a special shout out, so I'm going to give that to him today. But... With all that being said, I want to thank you guys for watching. This has been Jordan Bell signing off, and I'll see you next time.